after to get the outer husk off of it. So what I'll do is I'll break it open like that. And I'll run my thumb down and see I'm just splitting it all the way down. Everybody see this? And they're split it from one end to the other. Fork on anybody. Oh, and come down here at this end, break it out. And it's that outer tough bark that I'm after. Right there. Now this is the important part. Whenever you get all this thing split like that, you want to lay it out flat. See that? Where I've just got one big flat panel the whole length of it. start at this end you break it off to get that outer husk this is what you're after and the best way to collect that is to pull it over your finger see I'm doing that and it makes it separate and not hang on to the to the woody stuff as much so I'll do that for a little bit then if every few inches stop break that stuff out and collect the new fibers that are, are left well, try to get as much of that woody stuff out of there as you can. <coughs> so, and sometimes I'll pull it over my second finger and use my other finger to help it separate. See how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. And you got it's a rolling over your finger. Start to lose a few Is that woody here. stuff? Can you use that for like fire starters? Oh yeah. Really yeah. Bo, I don't want to jump the gun here, but um, can you use live stinging nettle as well? Yeah. Green? Okay. The trouble about live, I, it's good for expedient use, but if you're going to make it that it's something that you're, you're going to use for a longer time, anytime you use green material, uh, some of the other plants that work on this are milkweed, dogbane, uh, uh, the inner cambium layer on you know, some of the hickories, uh, cottonwood, uh, what else? Pawpaw, fibers Pawpaw. like that. Oh, and I want you to, I want everybody to have at least a couple of pieces of this, a couple <laughs> or three. So everybody take one of a fat end and a small end. You're going to split that up into probably thirds. Or maybe even fourths. Okay, see, this is what you have flip, where you've got a small end against the fat end. See that? And that gives you a more symmetrical pile. And this is probably bigger than what you need. I'm going to pull one of these out of here. Now I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it here. Just to show you the process. This will be bigger diameter than what you need, but it'll it'll be about perfect. So do that. Get you a nice long. So you wet it down first. And the process is grabbing it in the middle, and I hold it with my left, and I kink back on my thumb. I get back about where the crease is on your thumb with my fingertip coming down like that. Everybody see that? And I'll do about three quarters of an inch at a time. See about three quarters of an inch and roll opposite directions. Opposite direction. Make a little loop. See that? Left is coming towards me. Right's going away. Three quarters of an inch, really tight, and then just let it form. Up to about. And if I keep that tight, it will fold on itself to make a loop. Look at it from, like, you're looking at it from my perspective, and it'll make more sense. Okay, I'll make the loop, grasp it between my thumb and forefinger, and you got two tails sticking out to the side. You're always going to keep your finger right out at the tips of your finger and your thumb so you can keep it right at the junction. 
Then I'll come back, and take all, you always start with the top one, about three quarters of an inch, and I'll start back here at the crease of my thumb with my forefinger, pinching down on it like that, rolling forward, but I'll kink my wrist back as I do that, and grab it, and go forward as I do that, and that gets the most amount of twist in that. So here's, here's what it looks like. Come back, start it right there, roll it along there, grab the bottom one. When you're, when you're doing that, that finger out right there, when you come around, that bottom one goes right into place between your forefinger and so your you middle. Do that twist, grab that bottom one, and then pull it back. The one you started with that was on the top is now on the bottom, so you have to let go of it. Come back, grab the top, twist, grab, and pull back. Let go, see what it's doing, right? grab the top, twist, grab. After I get my loop, okay. uh, pinch it, twist forward, all, the bottom, you're always, it, it, unless over, you're left-handed, you're going to flip it all forward, around, but it, it, you're always twisting over, away from yourself. Twist away, with the right. at the bottom, twist. Get a strand, we'll, we'll get to splicing here in just a second. What you're going to do, now there's fiber to make the two better, or sometimes if it's really fat on one side, you can strip a little bit out and put it over into the other. But uh, let me see what you got going on. That's pretty good. Periodically I'll take and, and just smooth it out like that to even out the, the twists. Yeah? But yeah, it's oh. looking good. Twist, grab, pull back. Pinch, twist, grab, pull back. Spin, twist, oh. torque down, grab the other one. Back you got to get as much twist as possible. As much twist as possible. And how I get Pinch. most of that twist is I can see how I'm coming Roll, back here. Twist and down. Get a little forward the other one. On those and torque and back. back. Come back here and twist. Grab That's where I'm at so far. See how I'm rolling. And what I'm going to do is pull just a tiny little thread of this one over into that one. Because they're getting uneven diameters. Okay. Now, am I going to have to splice in two since it's they're both short? No. I see. Split that. I've already split it and overlaid it. Okay. Split so that split again. it again? Yeah. Yeah, because the splice, you don't want a big chunk coming in. It just makes a, a big, big hump and it's not doesn't add any strength to it. So you don't need to do the opposite thing. Well, you can. Yeah, that's good enough. But you got your V. You got that in the middle. Just lay it right across the V, snag it, pull that one down there, that um, one down So you're there. just connecting both of them? Yeah. Okay, because I've seen, seen guys where they'll leave like a third of it, and then they'll splice in back and forth catacorn, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, that but that, that makes sense too, though. Yeah. I mean, this is, to me, the strongest. I've seen guys where they just lay it in yeah. in parallel. Yeah, and then they'll snip off the ends, yeah. but then it seems like it could slip right, out. Right, it does. It's, it's not yeah. as strong as this. All right, great. Thank when you. When I first learned it, that's the way I was doing it, and then I saw this, and I thought, yeah, that's a lot oh, better. Yeah. All right, thank you. Right. Sure. And just, it's a finger feel thing. You'll start noticing with your fingers. Sweet. You can feel when the <laughs> diameters are getting too, too skinny or one back. Looking good, man. When you're here? Yep. And in case I missed it, what he did is he's got his V here, and then he took another piece and laid it over that V, and then just started um, cording in that piece on top of the other one instead of splicing in a single shoot and it's slipping. The V makes it a little bit beefier, but it it doesn't slip out because it's it's a V and on top of a V. Start up here, separate them out. Twist, hold that down. Twist, hold that down. Get tension on them, and just go forward. See how much I twist it up at once. And that'll stay. Oh yeah. And what's that called? Nero. And the first one's called what? Finger twist. Finger twist and Nero. And it's a tootsie roll. <laughs> and an egg roll. At the very end, tie a square knot.
and that will finish it up.